You once said the most dangerous person is one who is articulate. What would you recommend to a one who wants to learn to speak in a more articulate manner? Well, articulate is an interesting word, eh? Because if your joints are articulated, and that means you can do things with them because they're articulated, right? They're not one solid, vague mass. They're differentiated. And someone who's graceful is articulated and compelling because they're articulated. And speech is a form of articulation in that manner because the act of speech itself is extremely complicated. It's a very complicated motor activity, right? It's a very complicated action to dance with your tongue, let's say. It is definitely the case that there is no more exceptional form of the capacity to be dangerous than to be articulate. And one of the things that really shocks me Part of the reason that my son and I and our co-workers developed this essay app is that young men in particular are never taught this. Do you want to be competent and dangerous or do you want to be vague and useless? Because those are your options and I don't care what your job is, it doesn't matter what you end up doing. If you're a plumber, with great respect for plumbers by the way, and you're articulate, you can negotiate with your clients, you can introduce your co-workers, you can, you can make a case for your employees, you can advertise your services, you can think through your problems, you're firing on all cylinders. You know, our whole culture is based on the idea of the supremacy of the word. Our whole culture is based on the idea that it is the word itself that extracts habitable order from chaos and possibility. And, and the reason our culture is predicated on that is because it's a deep truth. And to the degree that our culture actually embodies that, it works. So it's a great thing to be articulate. And it would be so lovely if our educators were wise enough to communicate this appropriately to young men who are striving forward and to let them know in no uncertain terms that if they want to make themselves into forces to be contended with, that there's no surer route to that than an exceptional poetic literacy. Now, it's not like young people don't have an intuition of this. There are reasons they admire rap musicians, for example, who are often extraordinarily articulate in their performance and their capacity for spontaneous poetic utterance. And certainly, greatest people I've met, including great warriors, I know a former special services, special operations, soldier Jocko Willink. Some of you might know about Jocko. He's got a pretty decent online following and you know, he's about four feet wide and about three feet thick and he's one tough son of a bitch. I'll tell you, you don't want to mess with him and he knows perfectly well and is very capable of articulating the fact that his success as a eminent warrior is in no small part dependent on his ability to communicate. Because he could communicate well, he could listen to the men who were under his command. Because he was articulate, he could explain to his superiors the situation on the ground. Because he was articulate, he could make a case that the men under his command who were deserving would be promoted. Because he could think in an articulate manner, he could plan strategically and not lose battles. Okay, so that's the case for being articulate. And what's the alternative? You want to be inarticulate? You want to say ah and like and mmm and pause and stumble and be unable to formulate a strategy, be unable to elucidate a vision, be unable to compel and convince other people to entice them with your articulated vision of what might be? You want the opposite of that? That's why would you want that? You would choose awkwardness over grace? It's preposterous. It's beyond foolish.